Hi everyone for this session, harnessing the value of whiteness in the Anthropocene. Today, my topic is African elephants split listing as a potential game changer for value in conservation. My name is Wei Ji. Let me quickly introduce myself. I'm a counselor of Shanghai Wildlife Conservation Association, and also I'm a director of Committee of Endangered Wildlife Conservation of that association. Uh, I'm also a member of China Wildlife Conservation Association. In IUCN, I'm a member of African Elephant Specialist Group and also a member of SULI. I spent over 30,000 hours in African savanna and over 10,000 hours in African rainforest. And let me start from uh, the split listing of African elephant through its assessment, modeling, and the results. For the analytical approach, in 2008, spread list assessment, the, out the output is a change in population size. And in the recent assessment, data-driven trend model is used in the form of log linear model and site-based density as an appropriate index of, of abundance. A site-based trend amalgamated at country and the global levels. And for time period of assessment, uh, for the requirements of IUCN red list, it should be used, used um, 10 years or three generation length, but the, the is a challenge for long-lived species because of the data unavailability. So in 2008 assessment, the generation length is set at 25 years, while in the recent assessment, 25 years remains uh, remain for savanna elephants, but 31 years is applied for the uh, forest elephant. And the uh, uh, model is used as the following. It is a random effect hierarchical recession to estimate the continental density change in African elephants from log linear trend fitted at each survey site. For the details of the, this model, you may wish to uh, check into the supplementary materials in the red, red list for African elephants. And we can see the model result for savanna elephants and uh, forest elephants. The result is like following. The higher probability indicate that the forest, forest elephant should be crit critically endangered and the savanna elephant should, should be endangered. So, uh, what will this happen? What will happen next for this potential game changer? Um, so we, let's first see what will happen in CITES and then uh, in national laws. First, in CITES, let's let's look at this uh, chart. And this is the uh, CITES appendix for elephants up to today, and as we we can see. Um, African elephants are split listed in both Appendix 1 and Appendix 2. And for Appendix 2 African elephant populations, there is um, an annotation on it. And this annotation is very, very complex, as showing it reads like this. Actually, it's a white list to indicate what kind of specimens can actually be traded as Appendix 2, and all the other specimens should be deemed as Appendix 1 for African elephants in CITES. And so the possible change in CITES could be in three major ways. The first one is to replace African elephant with African elephant, all the subspecies of African elephant. It can be done through a standard nomenclature. It's, it's very easy because 
All the four existing appendix two African elephant populations are savanna elephants. And the other way is to split, uh, split list African elephants in appendix one into savanna elephant and the forest ele elephant. And, uh, uh, and to keep appendix two uh, as it is now. And the third way is for the forest, uh, for the African forest elephant, it, it will be listed in appendix one, and the uh, savanna elephant, it will be listed in appendix two. So, what will happen in national law according to this split listing? I, I believe that a re, uh, regional and national reassessment of African elephant will be done because uh, African elephant is such an unevenly distributed and uh, widely distributed species. And also because uh, now we have to, uh, now we have two kinds of African elephants in hand. So identification techniques are required in national laws to make, make sure the seizure or the prosecution possible. And of course, with forest elephant become an independent species, become a full species, then more focus in national laws, both in the range states, uh, transit uh, countries and destination countries, all these countries will, will pay more attention and put more focus on uh, the conservation of forest elephants. And as we can see that in this assessment, the stark difference Difference are shown in in all different sites, and we, we we can see for for the positive figures, positive percentages, it means the reduction in population. But but uh, on the other hand, the the negative percentage it actually indicates an increase in the population. So it's highly unevenly distributed. The patterns are quite different among different sites. So what, what will this bring into the conservation? What's the value in conservation for this listing? First, African elephants are consist of over 300 distinct populations, as I showed just now in, in the assessment sites. But these populations Without manpower, they, they will never even meet. And the smallest ones have only five, four to five individuals survived in, in that, that um, population, but uh, such as those in Mozambique and Mali. But for the biggest ones, as we all know, the Casa Transfrontier conservation areas, over 20,000, over 200,000 individuals are actually in that population. So how could the, how could they be conserved equally in in an equal manner? Of course, we, we cannot conserve them equally. So a comprehensive understanding of endangered species is, is needed. And uh, actually, species is a man-made concept. Populations are more important because that's the uh, that's how animals gather gather together and make, make a living. So. What, what we need to do is rescue endangered populations, control overloaded populations, and uh, use normal populations in a sustainable way. And after this split listing, I believe that we will finally realize um, to rescue and overload someone elephant, to prohibit use of it, to refuse to control it, do not mean an endangered forest elephant population will be rescued, but it will. Uh, but they will only mean that a mismanagement mismanagement of African elephants is just there. So the conservation is not preservation. To control an endangered population is wrong, as we all know, and to rescue an overloaded population is wrong. But many people doubt it. But to prohibit a sustainable use to a safe population is wrong either. But 
uh, nowadays many, many many people it seems that many people cannot find the value of, of, of this this point so it comes to the conservation logic do what do only what fits and uh, in the Anthropocene, there are two main, uh, two major thoughts on this, on the value of, of wildlife. The first one is when the buying stops and uh, the killing can chew. The other is if it, it pays, it stays. Actually, after years of observation, I, I believe that African elephants thrive where the latter is embraced. And uh, actually, that's what we call the Anthropocene, in to my understanding. So, in the Anthropocene, we have to believe that indigenous people and the local community are very, very important to, to the future of conservation, especially large mammal species like African elephants. And then we we have to realize that soil comes first, and then plants, and then animals. A species is overpopulated, it will destroy the land, the habitat, its habitat, and endanger those species' shared land with it, and also those plants. And finally, with the degradation of soil, every, everything will disappear. So the, the soil comes first, and then plants, and finally animals. It's quite counter intuition, but it's quite counterintuitive but but it, it's really really true and very important that we have to nurture urban urban general public to to realize this and we have to embrace adaptive management because the dynamic of african elephant populations and we are we must be very very precautionary when applying precautionary principle because many risks are not uncertain actually many risks we are facing a, um, we are facing and African elephants are facing are actually very very certain. So so we we can use preventive principle instead of precautionary principle to deal with such kind of certain risks. And we must pay attention to cumulative impacts rather than some single impacts brought by some specific use type. For, for example, we, we cannot uh, simply believe that non-commercial use is always good, but commercial use are always wrong. We have to understand the cumulative impacts of, of, of all kinds of use uh, so as to determine how we conserve African elephants. And in conclusion, this split, split listing of African elephants is actually a step for, forward to better conservation of wildlife. And value should be realized through exchange. Goodwill international cooperation is very vital. And a game changer in value of conservation. And uh, here is acknowledgement. Sincere thanks to Max Sassroth. Without whom this presentation would be highly unlikely. Sincere thanks to Africa, where I learned that true conservation is always with a cost and value. And sincere thanks to all those who are fighting to win a victory for wildlife in the Anthropocene. Thank you all. That's my presentation.